We're very lucky to have two large gum trees. I think they're grey gums in uh, the backyards of our neighbours. This is one, the larger of the two. This keeps on going up and up and up. And uh, over the back fence is another one. Not quite as large, but still a pretty decent size grey gum. We're lucky to have these because they provide, in summer, dappled sunlight across the backyard. They give us relief from the summer heat. And at all times of year, they provide uh, a resting place for all the parrots that we have in the area and, and uh, kookaburras as well. On the downside, in windy weather, they can drop a lot of bark and occasionally some very large branches. Back in February, about the middle of February, we had the largest branch we've ever seen come down. It was about four and a half metres long. It came down from uh, this one. About four and a half metres long and about 120 mil uh, in diameter at its largest point. I was going to get a tradesman in to cut it up and take it away, but once I checked the price, I thought, well, maybe I should just get a chainsaw, cut it up into very small pieces and put it out in the green bin bit by bit. That way I could uh, get a chainsaw, have some money left over, and uh, then have the chainsaw in the garage for whenever else I needed it. So that's what I did. I went out, had a look at the various chainsaws available. I'd had some experience with petrol chainsaws in the past and they were very noisy, very cranky and quite dangerous. So this time around I decided to have a look at electric chainsaws, not battery ones because uh, after you take into account the cost of batteries they can be about the same price as uh, petrol chainsaws. So I was having a look at uh, 240 volt chainsaws, mains powered, and uh, they were quite cheap. Uh, for around about $150, I was able to get a 400 mil chainsaw. That's uh, the bar length is 400 mil, and that's more than enough for a property of our size, a bit over 1,100 square meters. If you have a bigger property, then you might have to go to a petrol one. It might become a bit difficult running extension leads across a larger property. But for us, an electric chainsaw was perfect. And now for the obligatory unboxing. First thing to come out of the box is the manual. And here's the manual. Simple black and white manual, pictograms. Not bad. Next thing out of the box is the chainsaw itself. It comes complete with a chain guard. That's all there is in the box. One more thing you'll have to buy though is some chainsaw bar lube. Some lubrication for the chain and the uh, chain bar. And there you have it. The grand unboxing. Here are some things to consider when you're buying an electric chainsaw. First up, the pros. Electric chainsaws generally have a much longer warranty. In the case of Ryobi, there's a four-year warranty. Secondly, electric chainsaws always start. Just plug them in and turn them on. That's all there is. Number three, electric chainsaws are quieter than petrol chainsaws when they're running. Significantly quieter. Number four, when you turn them off between cuts, they're absolutely silent because the motor stops running. Number five, because they're run by an electric motor, there's almost no vibration. Number six, they cost less than equivalent petrol chainsaws. And number seven, they cost much less than the equivalent battery chainsaw. And last of the pros, number eight, there's no mixing petrol and two-stroke oil. Now for the cons, and there are only two. Number one, the work area should be within about 30 metres or 100 feet of a power outlet. Number two, electric chainsaw bar lengths come in up to about 400 millimetres only. That's about 16 inches. Right, time to give this chainsaw a workout. I've loaded up a piece of treated pine. It's 200 mil by 50. That's about 8 by 2 inches. Now I'll show you in slow motion what's happening. Pick 
can see that the uh, timber chips are mostly flying out to the side rather than being uh, thrown back at the operator, so that's good. This cap here gives you access to the oil reservoir. Just here's the uh, the gauge. You can see how full or empty it is. Just release this, top it up with the uh, chain bar lubricant. And do it back up again. Adjusting the chain tension is very easy. Just back off the the rotating knob here. Loosens the chain tension. Doing it up increases the chain tension. What we're aiming for is about three or four mils of gap when when you pull the chain down. Once you've got that, hold it and tighten it and that locks it. Now that's locked in place. Easy as that. Replacing the chain and chain bar is quite easy as well. Just rotate this all the way and that exposes the sprocket and you can just lift the chain off re remove the chain bar, replace them both and then put this back on again There's a little peg at the bottom, goes in a hole, and then and do it up, and then retension the chain. There's also a very effective chain break just here, like so locks the chain immediately to release the chain bring it back again if at any time you find your chainsaw won't start it may be simply because the chain break is on just check that and release the chain break 